All right. So we talked about melting and uh, softening or, or the glass transition temperature. And so now in this module, I want to talk about how we can measure the glass transition temperature. And we do it by monitoring those properties that we saw in the previous slides. So we look at, for example, heat capacity. Right? Heat capacity has a step change, and step changes are, are much easier to see uh, than these kind of more subtle um, slope changes. So we want to kind of get this. And so if we can monitor the heat capacity, then we could uh, look at uh, measuring the glass transition temperature. And we can do that uh, with an uh, experimental technique uh, known as differential scanning calorimetry, or DSC. So this is used to experimentally determine Tg. Um, and the way that it does this is we have this uh, furnace, uh, in this case. Uh, we actually have two, uh, and basically they're separated. Uh, so we have kind of one uh, container here that's known as the reference. Uh, so we either keep uh, basically nothing in there, just the, the holder, or we put some, some type of material that mimics uh, the sample. Um, and that's separated from the sample furnace um, in which we put the material of interest. And so basically what happens is we heat these separately. Um, so these are both electrically, you know, resistive, uh, resistively heated. So you can see the little wires uh, underneath. Uh, this is basically what's heating them. Um, and then this is all contained in a um, kind of an inert protecting uh, atmosphere, so that's the purge and protective gas uh, that's flowing through so that things don't kind of just burn. Um, and what we do is we heat up both of these furnaces and we attempt uh, and we do uh, heat them up at the same rate so that each uh, reference and sample is experiencing the same temperature at the same time. And so we basically scan temperature um, and uh, they're both we hold we want to hold both of them at the same temperature but the sample might act differently than the reference and so it might require more resistive heating or less resistive heating compared to the reference and that's what we monitor so we actually monitor the differential power going to each furnace as a function of the temperature and the different amounts of power required for the sample will be tied to the sample and so it will tell us about what's happening with the uh, the sample uh, so again it heats the two samples uh, identically and it measures this power difference um, and what it does is it allows us to look at heat capacity so this differential power um, is basically um, kind of the, the derivations shown here. So this is kind of how we define heat capacity with constant pressure. Um, and then if we have a scan rate, which is the change in temperature with time, we can basically apply the chain rule. Um, and we see that um, we are effectively looking at the heat capacity when we're looking at the change in enthalpy uh, with time multiplied by, or div sorry, di divided by the scan rate. So in essence, the slope uh, of this curve uh, multiplied by the scan rate gives us heat capacity. So the slope is telling us about heat capacity. So that's what uh, this tells us. So on this plot here, uh, you can see initially at the low temperature, it's just flat. And so that's telling us that the furnace or the reference furnace and the, the sample furnace are acting in a similar way. But if we see something change, a change in slope, that is going to be tied to the sample because the reference doesn't have anything occur in this range. It's just a reference sample. And so this change uh, in slope is a change in the specific heat or heat capacity. Um, so we see uh, a step change. Uh, so this could be a Tg. And then we also have peaks that can form. And uh, when a peak is positive here, um, it means that the uh, the reference or sorry the sample furnace requires more power relative to the uh, reference and so it is endothermic it takes more energy to heat up that sample and then the opposite is true uh, that would be an exothermic because our ref our sample furnace is taking less energy because it's expelling heat 
um, as part of an exothermic change. And so not only do we get Tg, but we can also get any endothermic or exothermic uh, temperature changes to our materials. All right, so the anomaly that we see in these curves, the little step change here, um, is indicative of glass transition. So this is kind of what it show, uh, what it may look like uh, in these cases. So it doesn't always look like a perfect step change, uh, but these are the change in heat capacity, which could be uh, the glass transition temperature for our material. And again, going back to the fact that it's a discontinuous function um, in that um, area. So this is what we're looking for. So we can look for these changes uh, in a temperature range and identify what our glass transition temperature is for our uh, silicate glasses that we're looking at.